Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for returning for another segment. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with Dr. Amy Peterson. She's joining us here as President and Chief Operating Officer at Cytomics Therapeutics. She's going to talk about ProBody. It's a therapeutic platform and also a pipeline to destroy cancer differently. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Amy Peterson. Thank you so much for taking the time this morning. Thank you so much, Neil, for welcoming to your show. It's really great to be here with you today. Well, give us a bit of insight into uh, your area of expertise and talk a bit about your role at uh, Cytomics. Sure. So uh, my background is that I'm a medical doctor by training and I have a subspecialization in medical oncology. I started my career with an academic appointment at the University of Chicago um, and in 2004, Five, I transitioned from clinical and academic research to industry, where I've been for the last 17 years. Uh, throughout my career, I've been focused on cancer treatments and their development with really a particular interest in challenging traditional paradigms associated with drug development and uh, discovery. And that pursuit is what has led me to where I am today as president and chief operating officer at Cytomics. Destroying cancer differently. Tell us a bit about uh, the vision behind Cytomics and what you're hoping to accomplish. I'd love to. So Cytomics Therapeutics vision is pretty simple, uh, pretty clear, and I believe compelling. We aim to destroy cancer differently. And what do we mean by that? Well, cancer research has been around for decades, and every now and then we've witnessed some very significant breakthroughs in cancer therapy. Think about antibody-based therapy or antibody drug conjugates, which are antibodies with warheads or payloads attached to them for targeted delivery, and most recently, immuno-oncology. But cancer still ha- is, has been, and still is really one of the largest health problems in the world. Nearly 10 million people die from cancer every year. Neil, if we don't continue to innovate and develop breakthrough medicines, the above facts will remain true and cancer will continue to be one of the largest health problems. And patients deserve better. So what we're doing at Cytomics is developing what we believe to be a breakthrough. We create therapies that are conditionally activated. That is, um, our therapies are designed to be inert or inactive in the circulation of a patient until it reaches the site of their cancer. And once the therapeutic agent reaches the tumor, it gets activated, resulting in localized destruction of cancer cells. This platform can be applied to multiple modalities, that is, antibodies, antibody drug conjugates, and even to immunotherapy, some of the breaks that I, I just mentioned. The name of this platform is ProBody, I do believe. Is that correct? That is correct. What would you say is the biggest challenge dealing with cancer, these cancer-killing drugs that were activated as soon as they were entered into the body? Um, conditional activation in its most simplistic definition means that certain situation must be true for the therapy to work. Sometimes these therapies are referred to as prodrugs. And so we, as you've already noted, refer to our technology as probodies. And at Cytomics Therapeutics, we've developed six probodies that are currently being tested in patients with cancer. And so what is a probody? Well, um, a probody consists of the core therapeutic agent and adds to that a mask that covers the active part of the agent and a linker which holds the mask in place. So my analogy is imagine a mask that a child might wear for Halloween. The mask when placed on the face without a strap might stay in place under certain conditions. It has some affinity to the face. However, with a tilt of a head or a turn of a head or a little sweat, it can fall off which is why these masks also have straps, which are designed to be wrapped around the head in order to keep the mask on, even during strenuous trick-or-treating activity. So akin to this strap, we employ a linker to our pro body, which serves to hold the mask in place, keeping the therapeutic agent inactive. That is, it cannot see, and you can't really see what I'm doing here, but I'm actually using air quotes for the word see. It can't see its target, and it can't have its intended effect. So leveraging decades of research at Cytomics Therapeutics, we've come to learn and appreciate that cancer cells and tumors rely on enzymes called proteases to grow and invade and spread. 
And tumors use these enzymes to basically break down and chew up healthy tissue, allowing the cancer cells to grow in now this space that was vacated by the healthy cell. The space or area in and immediately around a tumor is called the tumor microenvironment. And it's chock full of activated proteases. Healthy cells also have proteases. However, the key difference is that in healthy cells, these proteases are quiescent. They're turned off, they're not on. And so this creates a unique differential between cancer cells and healthy cells. And our linkers or straps, if we continue with the analogy, can be cut by these proteases. Once cut, it's easy for the mass to fall off, the probody and the core therapeutic agent can now have its effect. It's important to understand, again, that these proteases are not active in healthy cells or tissue. So our probodies circulate through the patient. When they reach the tumor site, they are conditionally activated for a local effect. And cytomics therapeutics differentiated approach helps to keep this activity really to the tumor microenvironment, minimizing collateral toxicity in healthy tissue that might also express the target, but which does not have activated proteases. So the mask is not going to come off in healthy tissue. What we're doing is transforming cancer's dependence on proteases for growth and metastases really into its own Achilles heel. Um, now, on to your question about what can uh, this conditional activation do in the treatment paradigm of cancer, which is a really great question and gets to the core of our vision. We, we believe that our probody platform, when applied to various therapeutic modalities, will result not only in safer therapies, but it will also unleash the potential to drug the undruggable and thereby creating more effective therapies. So starting with safety and improving what we refer to as a therapeutic index, let's take a conventional antibody as an example. Antibodies, they're targeted therapies. They're designed to bind to specific targets, regardless of whether they are on healthy or cancerous cells. For example, treatment with an antibody to the epidermal growth factor receptor, EGFR, is associated with response in EGFR-expressing tumors. However, it's also associated with skin rash. And why is that? because cells in the skin also express EGFR. The antibody doesn't know that it should not engage with healthy tissues. It sees, and I'm using my air quotes again here, Neil, sorry. Uh, it sees its target regardless of where it's located. It binds and it has its effect. Our masking technology is designed to prevent the binding to healthy cells. So in this case, with the pro-body approach, there would not be skin toxicity. The mask would not come off in skin. There's, no, there, there's insufficient protease activity. So this is an example of making something more safe. And we have actually applied our probody technology to an EGFR engaging biologic, but not a traditional antibody. Rather, uh, it's a biologic that's also designed to engage the immune system, something we refer to as a T-cell bispecific and we're just initiating the first in human clinical trial with that. But now turning to the statement of drugging the undruggable. Here, instead of widening the therapeutic index, we're actually creating one where none existed before. And here I'd like to talk about antibody drug conjugates. These are antibodies that recognize a specific target. So the antibody drug conjugates carry payloads, and these payloads are so toxic, you can't infuse them into a human in an appreciable concentration. So we attach them to an antibody. Imagine delivering an antibody drug conjugate to a patient where the target of the antibody is widely expressed. This would not be good. Why is that? Because everywhere the target is expressed, we can anticipate the antibody will bind. And once bind it bound, it will release its payload. So target identification for antibody drug development has been thwarted by the reality that there are a few targets expressed on tumor cells, which are not expressed on healthy cells. It's not shocking that cancer cells aren't really innovative. They really mostly leverage the same biology that healthy cells leverage. 
So some targets are expressed highly on tumor cells, but they're also expressed on healthy cells. So where we apply our mask and linker technology to ADCs, we've opened up a whole new universe of targets. And what we can do is create dr- drug, what we call drug, drug the undruggable. Well, if you would, give us a website where our listeners can learn more. Absolutely. So the website uh, that people can go to to learn more about cytomics is C-Y-T-O-M-X dot com. And uh, you can learn about our conditional activation. There are uh, movies that talk about it. Um, and you can read some of our scientific uh, presentations that uh, researchers have published. Well, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Lots of great information. Thank you, Neil. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Amy Peterson, President and Chief Operating Officer at Satomics Therapeutics. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.